Today, I want to review with you for the first time ever on YouTube, my spreadsheet, which I developed specifically for resellers to help them track their inventory and their costs of goods sold. You can download it using the link below. And the best things about this spreadsheet are that it's simple and free. Simple and free. There are a lot of really cool spreadsheets out there which help you track your inventory, your cost of goods sold, your income, expenses, your profit. It helps you track your items by color, by brand, by a lot of different characteristics. And those are the types of spreadsheets that I really like. But the more features you add to a spreadsheet, the more complex it becomes and the more potentially overwhelming it can be. So I've purposely kept my spreadsheet as simple and as bare bones as possible. And again, my spreadsheet is specifically designed to help you track your inventory and your cost of goods sold. You only need to track your cost of goods sold if you're using the accrual method for inventory, which means that you only deduct your inventory when you sell it. So if you go out and buy some inventory, that's not a deduction. It becomes an asset on your books. But later, let's say in a few months or a few weeks when you sell that inventory, it's at that time when you deduct the original cost. So if you don't have a record of those original costs and the dates that you purchased those items on, you're not gonna know what your cost of goods sold is. Now there are various methods to tracking your cost of goods sold. You can use the average cost method, you can use an adjustment method. The method that we're talking about today is called the specific identification method. And it's where you track every item of inventory individually. And that might seem overwhelming, but if you make it part of your listing process, which you have to do individually anyway, it's not that bad. But there might come a point when it does become too tedious and overwhelming, at which point you can decide if there's a better method for you. So let's dive into the spreadsheet. And the first tab is this instructions tab. There's a few simple instructions you can follow to remind you how to use the spreadsheet, but most of the magic happens on this inventory tab. So I'll just go through column by column. So column B, the SKU tab, it's not required. It's just for those of you who have a SKU number or some type of identification number that identifies whatever item you're dealing with. So next in column C through column G, we have the five minimum pieces of information that are required to track in your inventory. So the first is your item description. This is simply what the item is. Then you have your purchase date when you purchase the item, how much you purchase it for is the purchase price, and then this might be all you have filled out for a while until you sell the item. When you sell the item, you'll put the sale date here in column F and you'll put the sales price in column G. Now the sale date is what drives the cost of goods sold column. So this has a note not to enter or delete the formulas because this column is full of formulas. It simply says if there's a date here, then populate the cost of goods sold cell with the original purchase price, because that's what the cost of goods sold is. It's simply your cost or what you purchased the item for. So item B, for example, notice that we haven't sold it yet, so there's no sale date, there's no sales price, so the cost of goods sold column is not populated for that item. Now columns I and J are optional. These are for you to populate only if you wanna track the profitability by item. So this item profit column will calculate automatically as well. But the main purpose of this spreadsheet is to help you track your cost of goods sold. And then you'll be able to see a summary of your cost of goods sold by month and also for the year on this inventory summary tab. So first let's look at the cost of goods sold that we have in here in row six. So this is the only sale we had in February. So our cost of goods sold for February should show this $86. So we look at the inventory summary, we look at February and we show a cost of goods sold of $86. And if you wanna know what the cost of goods sold for the year is, you simply look over here in the annual total. And it also gives you your beginning inventory for the year, your total purchases for the year, and your ending inventory. And these are values that you'll need to know when you do your tax return. Because typically if you do your taxes on your own, it's gonna ask you what your beginning inventory is, what your purchases were, and what your ending inventory is, and it's gonna use those numbers to calculate your cost of goods sold. But this spreadsheet just helps you calculate your cost of goods sold directly. So if you're using this spreadsheet for the first time, you're gonna to wanna to enter all of your inventory, and anything that has a purchase date with a year that's before the current year is gonna show up as part of this beginning inventory number. So that's the quick overview of how it keeps track of your inventory and your cost of goods sold. Now I also have these other tabs on here that help you track your income and your expenses, and this is just a secondary part of this spreadsheet if you wanna try and use it. So first you can come to this categories tab and you can enter any expense category that you want to use to track your other expenses. 
You can just override these or you can enter new expenses on these custom expense rows and then just come into this expense tab and you'll enter the type of expense on the drop down, the date incurred, a description of what it was and the cost. And these expenses will automatically populate on this profit and loss summary tab, which will bring in your expenses from the expenses tab and also the cost of goods sold information from the inventory summary tab to give you your net income or your loss for each month and for the year. Now this is just a tool to help you. It's not necessarily supposed to take place of your overall bookkeeping system, but if it can help you, then that's what it's designed to do. And this spreadsheet can definitely be edited and tweaked and customized. You can add rows. So you'll just wanna note that there are a couple of hidden rows on the right. So these are used to help populate the formulas. You'll need to update those if you add additional rows. And then there's also this refunds tab. So if you have a refund, you just have to enter the original purchase price what you sold it for, and when it was refunded. And then you also have to indicate if you're gonna relist it or not, because that's gonna determine if we need to reverse the cost of goods sold or not. And depending on if that's a yes or a no, will determine how it shows up on the profit and loss summary tab and on the inventory tab. So just as a quick example, let's say that we sell this item B in October. Let's say we missed it and it sold in October. So that's going to tell the cost of goods sold column to populate with this $50 and we shouldn't forget to put the sales price. Let's say we sell it just for $10 more, so $60. So now in October, we should see this cost of goods sold of $50. So let's check the inventory summary tab and there it is. And that increases our overall cost of goods sold for the year. And now that we don't have any additional inventory on hand, you can see that our ending inventory is zero because all this stuff has sold. So that's a quick overview of how the spreadsheet works. The best thing you can do to get familiar with it is to get in there and start using it. And that'll help you determine if it's for you, if you wanna keep it as part of your system. I have clients who've been using it for the past three or four years. So again, it's super simple, it's free. You can download it using the link below. Let me know in the comments if you have any suggestions or questions about it. And be sure to come join my free Accounting for Online Sellers Facebook group. Mm -hmm.